The Second Balkan War was a conflict which broke out when Bulgaria, dissatisfied with its share of the spoils of the First Balkan War, attacked its former allies, Serbia and Greece, on 16 29 June 1913. Serbian and Greek armies repulsed the Bulgarian offensive and counter-attacked, entering Bulgaria with Bulgaria also having previously engaged in territorial disputes with Romania. This war provoked Romanian intervention against Bulgaria. The Ottoman Empire also took advantage of the situation to regain some lost territories from the previous war. When Romanian troops approached the capital Sofia, Bulgaria asked for an armistice, resulting in the Treaty of Bucharest in which Bulgaria had to cede portions of its first Balkan war gains to Serbia, Greece and Romania. In the Treaty of Constantinople, it lost their ear to the Ottomans. Background During the First Balkan War, the Balkan League succeeded in driving out the Ottoman Empire from its European provinces, leaving the Ottomans with only the Katalkar and Gallipoli peninsulas. The Treaty of London, signed on 30 May 1913, which ended the war, acknowledged the Balkan states' gains west of the Enos Midia line, drawn from Midia on the Black Sea coast to Enos on the Aegean Sea coast, on an UTI Posidatized basis, and created an independent Calbania. However, the relations between the victorious Balkan allies quickly soured over the division of the spoils, especially in Macedonia. During the pre-war negotiations that had resulted in the establishment of the Balkan League, Serbia and Bulgaria signed a secret agreement on 13 March 1912 which determined their future boundaries in effect sharing northern Macedonia between them. In case of a post-war disagreement, the area to the north of the kriva palanka orad line had been designated as a disputed zone under Russian arbitration and the area to the south of this line had been assigned to Bulgaria. In the event, during the war, the Serbs succeeded in capturing an area far south of the agreed border, down to the batola gevgelia line. At the same time, the Greeks advanced north, occupying Thessaloniki shortly before the Bulgarians arrived and establishing a common Greek border with Serbia. When Bulgarian delegates in London bluntly warned the Serbs that they must not expect Bulgarian support on their Adriatic claims, the Serbs angrily replied that that was a clear withdrawal from the pre-war agreement of mutual understanding according to the Kriva Palanka Adriatic line of expansion. But the Bulgarians insisted that in their view, the Varda Macedonian part of the agreement remained active and the Serbs were still obliged to surrender the area as agreed. The Serbs answered by accusing the Bulgarians of maximalism, pointing out that if they lost both northern Albania and Varda Macedonia, their participation in the common war would have been virtually for nothing. When Bulgaria called upon Serbia to honor the pre-war agreement over northern Macedonia, the Serbs displeased at the great powers requiring them to give up their gains in northern Albania, adamantly refused to alienate any more territory. The developments essentially ended the Serbo-Bulgarian alliance and made a future war between the two countries inevitable. Soon thereafter, minor clashes broke out along the borders of the occupation zones with the Bulgarians against the Serbs and the Greeks. Responding to the perceived Bulgarian threat, Serbia started negotiations with Greece, which also had reasons to be concerned about Bulgarian intentions. On 19 May, 1 June 1913, two days after the signing of the Treaty of London and just 28 days before the Bulgarian attack, Greece and Serbia signed a secret defensive alliance confirming the current demarcation line between the two occupation zones as their mutual border and concluding an alliance in case of an attack from Bulgaria or from Austria-Hungary. With this agreement, Serbia succeeded in making Greece a part of its dispute over northern Macedonia. Since Greece had guaranteed Serbia's current occupation zone in Macedonia, in an attempt to halt the Serbo-Greek rapprochement, 
Bulgarian Prime Minister Gishov signed a protocol with Greece on 21 May agreeing on a permanent demarcation between their respective forces, effectively accepting Greek control over southern Macedonia. However, his later dismissal put an end to the diplomatic targeting of Serbia. Another point of friction arose. Bulgaria's refusal to cede the fortress of Silistra to Romania. When Romania demanded its cession after the First Balkan War, Bulgaria's foreign minister offered instead some minor border changes, which excluded Silistra and assurances for the rights of the Kutsuvliks in Macedonia. Romania threatened to occupy Bulgarian territory by force, but a Russian proposal for arbitration prevented hostilities. In the resulting Protocol of St. Petersburg of 8 May 1913, Bulgaria agreed to give up Silistra. The resulting agreement was a compromise between the Romanian demands for the entire southern Dobroja and the Bulgarian refusal to accept any cession of its territory. However the fact that Russia failed to protect the territorial integrity of Bulgaria made the Bulgarians uncertain of the reliability of the expected Russian arbitration of the dispute with Serbia. The Bulgarian behavior had also a long-term impact on the Russo-Bulgarian relations. The uncompromising Bulgarian position T.O. Micron reviewed the pre-war agreement with Serbia during a second Russian initiative for arbitration between them, finally led Russia to cancel its alliance with Bulgaria. Both acts made conflict with Romania and Serbia inevitable. Preparation Bulgarian War Plans In 1912 Bulgaria's national aspirations, as expressed by Tsar Ferdinand and the military leadership around him, exceeded the provisions of the 1878 Treaty of San Stefano, considered even then as maximalistic, since it included both eastern and western Thrace and all Macedonia with Thessaloniki, Edirne and Constantinople. Early evidence of the lack of realistic thinking in Bulgarian leadership was that although Russia had sent clear warnings expressed for the first time on 5 November 1912 that if the Bulgarian army occupied Constantinople they would attack it. They continued their attempts to take the city. Although the Bulgarian army succeeded in capturing Edirne, Tsar Ferdinand's ambition in crowning himself emperor in Constantinople proved also unrealistic when the Bulgarian army failed to capture the city in the Battle of Katalkar. Even worse, the concentration on capturing Thrace and Constantinople ultimately caused the loss of the major part of Macedonia including Thessaloniki in that could not be easily accepted, leading the Bulgarian military leadership around Tsar Ferdinand to decide upon a war against its former allies. However, with the Ottomans unwilling to definitely accept the loss of Thrace in the east, and an enraged Romania, the decision to open a war against both Greece and Serbia, was a rather adventurous one. Since in May the Ottoman Empire had urgently requested a German mission to reorganize the Ottoman army. By mid-June Bulgaria became aware of the agreement between Serbia and Greece in case of a Bulgarian attack. On 27 June Montenegro announced that it would side with Serbia in the event of a Serbian-Bulgarian war. On 5 February Romania settled her differences over Transylvania with Austria-Hungary signing a military alliance and on 28 June officially warned. Bulgaria that it would not remain neutral in a new Balkan war, as skirmishing continued in Macedonia, mainly between Serbian and Bulgarian troops. Tsar Nicholas II of Russia tried to stop the upcoming conflict, since Russia didn't wish to lose either of its Slavic allies in the Balkans. On 8 June, he sent an identical personal message to the kings of Bulgaria and Serbia, offering to act as arbitrator according to the provisions of the 1912 Serbo-Bulgarian Treaty. Serbia was asking for a revision of the original treaty, since it had already lost North Albania due to the Great Powers' decision to establish the state of Albania an area that had been recognized as a Serbian territory of expansion under the pre-war Serbo-Bulgarian Treaty. In exchange for the Bulgarian territory of expansion in northern Macedonia, 
The Bulgarian reply to the Russian invitation contained so many conditions that it amounted to an ultimatum, leading Russian diplomats to realize that the Bulgarians had already decided to go to war with Serbia. That caused Russia to cancel the arbitration initiative and to angrily repudiate its 1902 Treaty of Alliance with Bulgaria. Bulgaria was shattering the Balkan League, Russia's best defense against Austrian-Hungarian expansionism, a structure that had cost Russia so much blood, money and diplomatic capital during the last 35 years. Russia's Foreign Minister Sazonov's exact words to Bulgaria's new Prime Minister Stoyan Danev were, do not expect anything from us and forget the existence of any of our agreements from 1902 until present. Tsar Nicholas II of Russia was already angry with Bulgaria because of the latter's refusal to honor its recently signed agreement with Romania over Silistra, which had been the result of Russian arbitration. Then Serbia and Greece proposed that each of the three countries reduce its army by one-fourth, as a first step to facilitate a peaceful solution, but Bulgaria rejected it. Bulgaria was already on the track to war, since a new cabinet had been formed in Bulgaria where the pacifist Gishov was replaced by the hardliner and head of a Russophile party, Dr. Dan Evers Premier. There is some evidence that to overcome Tsar Ferdinand's reservations over a new war against Serbia and Greece, certain personalities in Sofia threatened to overthrow him. In any case, on 16 June, the Bulgarian High Command, under the direct control of Tsar Ferdinand and without notifying the government, ordered Bulgarian troops to start a surprise attack simultaneously against both the Serbian and Greek positions without declaring war and to dismiss any orders contradicting the attack order. The next day the government put pressure on the general staff to order the army to cease hostilities which caused confusion and loss of initiative, and failed to remedy the state of undeclared war. In response to the government pressure Tsar Ferdinand dismissed General Saviv and replaced him with General Dmitry as commander-in-chief. Bulgaria's intention was to defeat the Serbs and Greeks and to occupy areas as large as possible before the great powers interfered to end the hostilities. In order to provide the necessary superiority in arms, the entire Bulgarian army was committed to these operations. No provisions were made in case of a Romanian intervention or an Ottoman counterattack strangely assuming that Russia would assure that no attack would come from those directions. Even though on 9 June Russia had angrily repudiated its Bulgarian alliance and shifted its diplomacy towards Romania, the plan was for a concentrated attack against the Serbian army across the Varda plain to neutralize it and to capture North Macedonia, together with a less concentrated one against the Greek army near Thessaloniki, which had approximately half the size of the Serbian army. In order to capture the city in South Macedonia, the Bulgarian high command was not sure whether their forces were enough to defeat the Greek army, but they thought them enough for defending the South Front as a worst-case scenario, until the arrival of additional forces after defeating the Serbs to the north. Opposing forces according to the military law of 1903, the armed forces of Bulgaria were divided in two categories the active army and the national militia. The core of the armed forces consisted of nine infantry and one cavalry division. The Bulgarian army had a unique organization among the armies of Europe, since each infantry division had three brigades of two regiments, composed of four battalions of six heavy companies of 250 men each, plus an independent battalion, two large artillery regiments and one cavalry regiment giving a grand total of 25 very heavy infantry battalions and 16 cavalry companies per division, which was more than the equivalent of two nine-battalion divisions, the standard divisional structure in most contemporary armies, as was also the case with the Greek and Serbian armies in 1913. Consequently, although the Bulgarian army had a total of 599,878 men mobilized in the beginning of the First Balkan War, 
there were only nine organizational divisions, giving a divisional strength closer to an army corps than to a division. Tactical necessities during and after the First Balkan War modified this original structure. A new 10th Division was formed using two brigades from the 1st and 6th Divisions, and an additional three independent brigades were formed from new recruits. Nevertheless, the heavy structure generally remained. By contrast the Greek army of Macedonia had also nine divisions, but the total number of men under arms was only 118,000. Another decisive factor affecting the real strength of the divisions between the opposing armies was the distribution of artillery. The nine-division strong Greek army had a total of 176 guns and the ten-division strong Serbian army, 230. The Bulgarians had 1,116, a ratio of 6 to 1 against the Greeks and 5 to 1 against the Serbian army. There is a dispute over the strength of the Bulgarian army during the Second Balkan War. At the outbreak of the First Balkan War, Bulgaria mobilized a total of 599,878 men. The non-recoverable casualties during the First Balkan War were 33,000 men. To replace these casualties, Bulgaria conscripted 60,000 men between the two wars, mainly from the newly occupied areas, using 21,000 of them to form the Sears, Drama and Odrin independent brigades. It is known that there were no demobilized men. According to the Bulgarian command the army had 7,693 officers and 492,528 soldiers in its ranks on 16 June. This gives a difference of 99,657 men in strength between the two wars. In comparison, subtracting the actual number of casualties including wounded and adding the newly conscripted men produces a total of no less than 576,878 men. The army was experiencing shortages of war materials and had only 378,998 rifles at its disposal. The first and third armies were deployed along the old Serbian-Bulgarian borders, with the fifth army under General Stefan Toshev around Kush Tendel, and the fourth army under General Stilian Kovachev in the Kokani Radovis area. The second army under General Nikola Ivanov was detailed against the Greek army. The army of the Kingdom of Serbia accounted for 348,000 men divided into three armies with ten divisions. Its main force was deployed on the Macedonian front along the Vada River and near Scorpia. Its nominal commander-in-chief was King Peter I, with Radomir Putnik as his chief of staff and effective field commander. By early June, the army of the Kingdom of Greece had a grand total of some 142,000 armed men with nine infantry divisions and one cavalry brigade. The bulk of the army with eight divisions and a cavalry brigade was gathered in Macedonia, positioned in an arc covering Thessaloniki to the north and northeast of the city, while one division and independent units were left in Epirus. With the outbreak of hostilities, the 8th Infantry Division was transferred to the front, and with the arrival of new recruits, the army's strength in the Macedonian theatre increased eventually to some 145,000 men with 176 guns. King Constantine I assumed command of the Greek forces, with LT, General Victor Dusmanis as his chief of staff. The Kingdom of Montenegro sent one division of 12,000 men under General Janko Vukotic to the Macedonian front. The Kingdom of Romania had the largest army in the Balkans, although it had not seen action since the Romanian War of Independence against the Ottomans in 1878. Its peacetime strength was 6,149 officers and 94,170 men, and it was well equipped by Balkan standards, possessing 126 field batteries, 15 howitzer batteries and 3 mountain batteries, mostly made by Krupp. Upon mobilization, the Romanian army mustered 417,720 men allocated in five corps. 
Some 80,000 of them were assembled to occupy the southern Dobruja, while an army of 250,000 was assembled to carry the main offensive into Bulgaria. The political developments and military preparations for the Second Balkan War attracted an estimated 200 to 300 war correspondents from around the world. Outbreak of the war. The main Bulgarian attack was planned against the Serbs with their 1st, 3rd, 4th and 5th armies while the second army was tasked with an attack towards Greek positions around Thessaloniki. However, in the crucial opening days of the war, only the fourth army and second army were ordered to advance. This allowed the Serbs to concentrate their forces against the attacking Bulgarians and hold their advance. The Bulgarians were outnumbered on the Greek front, and the low-level fighting soon turned into Greek attack all along the line on 19 June. The Bulgarian forces were forced to withdraw from their positions north of Thessaloniki to defensive positions between Kilkis and Struma River. The plan to quickly destroy the Serbian army in central Macedonia by concentrated attack turned out to be unrealistic, and the Bulgarian army started to retreat even before Romanian intervention, and the Greek advance necessitated disengagement of forces in order to defend Sofia.